Musselman, space cowboys and space cowgirls, intergalactic art critics who have called this very podcast self-serving space trash. I'm Odessa Lil, your mistress of ceremonies. Welcome to the Speak Easily Hour Minute podcast, where the burlesque show that turned into a streaming show that turned into a comedy troupe that turned into a podcast. At this point, we have no frame of reference on reality, people. Help. We are transmitting live to you from the Central Galaxy. Remember, whatever happens in the Central Galaxy stays in the Central Galaxy. With me, as always, here on the SS Center Hole, that's what I call Fresno, are my talented co hosts, Klingon Vanna White and Shecky Davis Jr. Greetings and salutations. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's new, you two? I let Vanna start because my my stuff is pretty sad. Sad. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I love sad news. I mean, I, I all I I'm, I'm still um you know host doing my rescue. I'm um, rescuing cats, a couple chihuahuas, and um, sea creatures, porpoises. Sea creatures? Yes, oh, porpoises right. and dolphins. Wayward porpoises Gosh, and yeah. dolphins, and and mostly cats and one or two chihuahuas. But, you know, I'm, it, we're just at cruising altitude with our rescue right now, and that's it. What's going on with you, Shucky? It sounds really sad. I, I'm only sad because when I watched that movie that we had to review today, it made me start thinking about 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 all of the scary shit that, that artists make. Like, artists are the devil, and they oh, scare me. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And I keep thinking, you know, like, what if this art's going to kill me? You know, and 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 I and and seeing that movie kind of solidified the fact because all movies are truthful. So, so I was like, oh my god, yeah. all those little weird porcelain figures you have, Vanna, about the dogs <laughs> and the cats in the bathroom in your in your with in their your do- with their all staring, unblinking eyes. Yes, while I'm while I'm trying to take a deuce, it was just like, oh my god, and then and then I saw that that movie, and I was just like, oh lord, it's true, Vanna's porcelain dolls are trying to kill me. And see, I knew it. I knew it. We, I, I'll tell you more when we talk about the movie. But, but, but that's got me shaken to the core. Like, like the core of my being is shaking. You're Gosh. shook. I'm shook. I'm not. Should have thought about this before we <laughs> told sh- you to watch the movie. I'm shook. I am. I, I am shooketh. I forgot about how sensitive you are, Shecky. I, I am. I'm. I'm very, very. Um, uh, what is it called when, when sensitive I'm, imprinted? No, not sensitive. I don't give a shit about that. But I'm very like when when it's easy to Im- print stuff. Impress impressionable. Impressionable. Yes, yes. I'm like I'm like this beautiful flower that is so easily you know to to Im- to impress. Wait, 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 wait. So, so what? you think that all art is evil because why? I, I think I'm a little confused. Because the movie said that 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 you have to make art for the sake of art. And 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 I know that those those porcelain dolls were made to cash in on 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 money, and so Whoa. so 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 they're all gonna try to kill me. So <gasps> so when I get back from Mexico, I will be going to Vanna's house, and I will be eradicating all of those porcelain dolls. So, Wait, you're still in Mexico? Yeah, I I can't get out of Mexico. You know, Shit. I got I, like that's the thing. Like I'm stuck in Mexico. My ass is full of all of your prescript, all of your, all of your over the counter drugs that you want. I'm sitting here Wait, holding Luke. it. You know. Did you I'm... did you get the Tylenol alcohol need? Yes, it's codeine? in my butt. It, 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 it's up okay. to the left in my in my butt yeah. cheek. Okay, uh, good. Um, did you also get the Retin A that we requested? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like fifty percent. We want it to like just burn the I know. top layer. Yeah. The problem off. the problem with the Retin A was it started to leak, so so my butt's a little burned right now. So so I'm like ah. It's never looked better. Well, I probably yeah, you're, will look great. You're at, you have the ass of a three year old. <laughs> I have the ass of a three year old. Is that? <laughs> yeah. So well, did you get my uh my uh. Chicklets and hammock that I asked for as well. Yes, yes. The, Thank the, you. The, 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 the hammock I had to fold like origami style, but it's yeah. up in my ass too. Okay, so, good. As long as you can, you can retrieve that once you get back. I mean, it might be a little brown, but it's still there. So I, uh, I, I 
fail to understand why you need to smuggle a hammock back into the country in your ass. I mean, this is more fun that way. No, oh, yeah. no. I mean, it I, makes me feel like you just have some fetish for putting things in your butt. He's got no. a couple of knockoff handbags up there, too, for me. So, Oh, good. I'm, it works for me. I'm just saying. Do you, you have know, room for another handbag? Maybe. But but you have to understand <laughs> that that I need to destroy you know the the see see you're trying to take me off of my off of my sworn duty and my sworn duty he is said to duty. But I said he duty. did say duty. duty. It's to rid Look, the world I to say, of we, art. I have a very valuable painting over at Klingon's house. It's the original dogs playing poker. Okay. And I just if you could do me a favor, don't mess with that. Nope. Okay. It's gotta, like it's I got to burn. No, no, no. It was made by communists. Nope. It's okay. I got some matches, nope. matches in my ass now. I got to burn them up. Yes. Okay, you know, we're going to, we'll get back to that okay. when we start to talk about the movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we don't want to ruin it for our listeners. I'm just saying, art, <laughs> we'll ruin Picasso, it for them then. See? Later. Picasso, Van Gogh, yeah. Yeah. all of them. What about them? They're witches. <laughs> No, the problem is, is that they aren't witches. There you go. I only collect art by witches. So we're going to have an amazing time today because we have a special musical guest. He's our guest and he's musical. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds exciting. His name is Chalky the Funky Space Wizard. Should we call him? Yes. Okay. It's going to be long distance though. I have a question. Oh, what? what Before what? we call him. Yeah. So, so he's a wizard? Or, or, so not a witch. So will you... No, he's a wizard. Okay, so will you witches be able to interact with him? Or will this be some, like, some, like, you know, sharks and jet shit going on from West Side Story? That, I, I need to make well, sure. Well, like, I mean, I think it, uh, it'll it be okay just as long as he doesn't go into that's... mansplaining warlock mode. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, no, no. He's not a well, warlock. He's, he's not a, a warlock. He's yeah. a... He's, okay. he, he's a, he's a he fucking, fucking hate shark. mansplaining warlocks. I know. I can't do that. I can't... I can't have the caveman painting warlock. That seems weird. No, no. As Alistair Crowley once said in uh, his <laughs> treaty, um, no man's painting warlock. Um, okay, okay. Let's let's call him. So it's long distance. I'm just going to patch into the neighbor's phone. Okay. All right. Beep boop pop beep. Ahoy hoy. Hey. Wow. Didn't even he was waiting for us. Hey, this is Chucky. Yeah, let me explain to you, uh, Alistair Crowley and uh, Chaos Man. Now, if you, if I may, that's what this. Oh, I called the wrong number. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi guys. Hey. Put him on notice, buddy. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm a little confused. Are you in outer space? Or are you actually in a Reno hotel room? I'm in Reno, Nevada, which is a sort of form of. Uh, it's and it's negative space. Oh, far out. You know what I'm uh, saying? Could you get me like a hammock and some chiclets? Yeah, no. Do you want to come stay here? We got a we got an extra. I mean, there's room in the bed and it's huge. What what size bed is that? Super king, dude. Super king. Uh, is king. Is this super king bigger than a regular king size bed? Yeah, it's it's super king, dude. Uh, it's also a it's way bigger. Super How do you get dude. sheets for that? I like that. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> do I look like a hotel? What don't are you guys that. doing? <laughs> um, we are calling you. We're oh. calling you, and we're also trying to talk Shecky off a ledge as per usual. But Shecky, uh, are you, Shecky, are you okay, dude? What What do you need, man? I'm here for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, you I'm scared of wizards. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm scared of wizards. Well, I'm with you. Maybe All the wizard a... turned my dog into a frog. Aw, buddy. And I, I keep trying to kiss him, but it won't turn him back. <laughs> Wrong end. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing in Reno? And I'm are you playing... wearing a cape? <laughs> I'm playing shows. Um, I'm playing shows here in Reno. And uh, it went well. Like, last night... I played a show at a little like punk rock Irish bar and I don't, you know, when you play shows in other places, you never know how it's going to go, but I got all the white people dancing and they actually had a, a soul train circle. They had a soul <laughs> oh, train wow. circle. But, I mean, it's white people. So sans soul, you know what I mean? But it was still, 
they were dancing in the middle of it, so that's cool. It was like a Sam's Club circle. Yeah, it was like a <laughs> Walgreens circle. Hey, let me get down with my funky self. Ooh, Sir La Table so circle. <laughs> Sir La Table, it's hello. Sur la table. I, I, I'm surprised that there's Irish people in Reno. I just never thought about it. I mean, can you imagine being Irish in I mean, Reno? I don't think it's true Irish people. It's just like an uh, Irish pub. You know what I mean? They, they, oh, there's yeah. beer? <laughs> yeah, there's beer there. Exactly. Okay. Actually, this this pub I played last night, they, they, they don't have beer on tap. It was just all the beer was in a giant trough, like a horse trough. <laughs> Wait, what? That's awesome. So they, they, yeah. they, they'd have their mug. And they would just kind of come in and just kind of like oh, scoop yeah, it in. Just dip it in, yeah. <laughs> just put your face right up in there. That's so cool. Ooh, I didn't try that. I, and you know what? You know what's so weird is like, I mean, it's not weird because it's Nevada, but this bar never it's closes. You weird. can drink there any time. You can go there at 6 in the morning and go drinking. It's And then tip, dip your face in the trough. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's like, like no Nevada is like another world. You, you kind of are in outer space. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's negative space here. It's, it's um, Reno is 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 unlike Vegas. It's much more like a rednecky and and you know, dirty and, and yeah. I, yeah. I recommend it. I recommend it though. It's, more it's, so it's, than it's, Vegas. It's wow. like it's like Fresno with slots. It's you're so on the money. <laughs> you just nailed it. It's uh, maybe closer to Bakersfield. There but, you go. Yeah. Hot slots. Mm-hmm. It's um interesting. If you ever need a culture shock in the reverse way, then come to Reno. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I'm really really happy to hear that you got the the Irish people dancing, and it wasn't even like a river dance or anything. It was just like tiddly tar, tiddly tar to tar, tiddly tar, tiddly tar to tar. Now, now, Klingon, remember, we have different cultures on our planet than you do in <laughs> outer space. I'm trying to teach her cultural sensitivity, Chalky, and I just, maybe I'm the wrong teacher. Uh, uh, well, are you so culturally insensitive, um, Klingon? She knows this. <laughs> she loves doing impressions of, of, of races. It's terrible. <laughs> can, you, can you be in the meet people? Oh, I... What? <laughs> She's like, me? Never me. It's just my favorite. <laughs> uh, I am on so much allergy medication right now, you guys. Is I can't be healthy. Fun. I wish I would be on it for years, but no, it just makes you want to live. <laughs> oh, that sounds that's terrible. <laughs> I wish. Maybe you shouldn't be cutting up all the wall fed and snorting it. I know. I wish it. Yeah. It, wall fed. Wall fed. Such a cheapskate. <laughs> I'm, 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 like, get the I'm good not allowed stuff. to buy anymore until next month. <laughs> I'm like, get the good stuff. <laughs> the little red pills. So what's today's podcast all about? I don't know. You well, tell me. Okay, I will. We really <laughs> get out of our depth just like a certain filmmaker, and discuss Netflix art-damaged Velvet Buzzsaw. Ugh. But not <laughs> before... Tell us how you really feel. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to let it all out now. Um, but not before damaging all of our major senses by reviewing Chalky's favorite, Flamin' Hot Doritos. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's our snack I am week. super scared of that. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, just looking at the bag, I just my, my eyeballs are like on fire. My butt's on fire. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's because you had to put them up there before you crossed the border. I did. I was like, ah, damn. This is All right, spicy so- in my butt holy. <laughs> uh, um, we're going to take a little commercial break and get over that image. And when we get back, we're going to talk to more Chucky. Woo! Hello, Henri. Bonjour, Babette. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, oh la la! What is that smell? It smells like, uh, uh, like the hen house. Oh, <laughs> merci! New from Klingon Van White's pantheon of products, Poulet Puri, the room scent that makes your whole house smell like a French chicken. One spray will have your lover scratching at the ground and pecking at your ankles. Oh, mm. 
To learn more, go to chickenspray.us. Poulet Paris, another fine product from the Klingon Vanna White Pantheon of Products. We're back with more Speak Easily, Hour Minute podcast, and we're talking to Chalky the Funk Wizard. Sorry, did I say that right? I said that wrong. Chalky the Funky Space Wizard. No, no, you said it right. Chalky the Funk Wizard. Yeah, either way, I'll, look, I'll, I'll take what, just call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. Okay? There you go. Ah, all right, Joe. <laughs> Chalky is a, it's a funky alien wizard from outer space. With his unique take on electro funk, he's brought his weird stage show to festivals like Noise Pop and the Offbeat Fest. Chalky has shared the stage with like minded weirdos P. Lander Z, Elvez, Elvez, that's awesome. Love Bob Elvis. Long the Third, Metalachi, captured by robots, I love them, and uh, the Oingo Boingo Dance Party. These are all esteemable acts. Very good. He also hosts a radio show called the Chalky Horror Radio Show on BFF.FM on Wednesdays. That's right, Wednesdays, 4 to 6 p.m. Chalky, welcome to the Speak Easily Hour Minute Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I love your show. I love you guys. This is an honor for me. Hey, we man. love you. You should have us on your um, <laughs> Chalky Horror Radio Show. Oh, yeah. Anytime you want. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be awesome. What do you do on your show? Tell us all about it. I talk and I play music. It's 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 like radio, <laughs> <laughs> actual music. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. I, I, so I had a, a podcast for eight years called Illogical Contraption, yeah. where we were just we talked for a long time, and now I'm really into <laughs> not talking and playing music, and it's really it's giving me much joy in life. So I'm very happy right now, not talking so much. What well, what was Illogical Contraption all about? It was like um. It was like the San Francisco music comedy podcast, and uh, it did pretty. We were like punk metal dudes clowning on music a lot, and and sci-fi and horror. And actually, it actually started because um, when Art Bell stopped doing Coast to Coast, oh, yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to do. You know, there was like George Nori took over for Art Bell, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the same. Yeah, so we wanted to have like a, a conspiracy theory alien podcast that was more in line with um art bell but as politics became in the forefront of america like cons- like the right wing kind of took over conspiracy theories to the point where it wasn't fun anymore hell yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah they took it from us yeah they took it from us they took the weird stuff from us and they, they made it too real or something and so we just went in another direction but it it went it was successful we did good and we did, we did a lot of live shows and stuff but it was time to end it but i can't not do radio or podcasting it's in my blood you know so i have to keep going so this is my new show right on and can people still hear the the older uh, yeah we have eight yeah. years of archives on itunes it's all up there it's it's everywhere yeah and anywhere you can subscribe please listen to illogical contraption uh, there's many hours of me talking on a microphone. If you enjoy what you're hearing right now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, how about uh, your radio show on BFF.FM? Are those also archived on that website? I'm only five episodes in, and they're all up there. You could listen to every single. You could hear me getting my sea legs back doing radio again, which is uh, I think is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but well, no, you're I've, a natural. I've had, I've had cool guests on so far. I've had um. I don't know if you guys know the outsider artist Jan Terry. Uh, she's uh, she's a, a funny artist from Jersey that has people have said she has the worst music video ever made. <gasps> uh, I gotta look this up. Oh, been, Jan she, Terry, um, losing you. I just yeah, looked it up. The one, yeah. And uh, yeah, we gotta watch it. <laughs> so she she I just had an interview with her. Ooh. And, uh, she announced that she's running for president on my show, and and. <laughs> I had Alexander Hack from Einsters and Neubauten on, which is, that's a big, huge, no so, you know, it's, I've been trying, I've been trying. That's amazing. Does he live in San Francisco? No, he's a nomad. Okay. Yeah. Of course he is. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I have actually heard that Blixa Bargelt had a property in SF. I don't know if that's true or not. Blixa lived in the Castro for a while, and one every- of my one of my friends was his um, kids' nannies. Really, nanny? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Like my life, I'm so unlucky. Like I, I've been gambling here in Reno, and I've lost all my money. And it's I, I just I, I've never won in gambling. Like I I see my friends go to like they post pictures on Facebook of them in Reno and hundreds of dollars, and they just win on slot. I've never won on a slot machine in my life, and uh, I don't know why I keep doing it. And um, so I'm so unlucky. Like uh, when Blixa lived in San Francisco, everyone's like, "Oh, I saw Blixa in the Castro. I saw Blixa, you know, on the bus." I'm like, "What the fuck?" And then apparently <laughs> John Waters on like I only want to meet yeah. one celebrity in my life, John Waters, and, and and everyone meets him except me, and I'm very um, this way. I've run into him quite a bit actually. At um... see, see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> bitch! <laughs> I stood behind him in line for like twenty minutes to get popcorn at Noir City at the Castro Theater, and in case you're wondering, he has plain popcorn, no salt, no butter. What does he smell like? What? I wasn't that close. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> There's just the smell of popcorn was in the air. And then, of course, if you just go to, uh, to um, uh, <laughs> this is terrible. I just forgot the name. Burger Boogaloo. Burger Boogaloo. It's coming Burger really soon. Boogaloo. Every fucking year, he's he's the MC and he's walking around. So you weren't should go to you, that. Weren't you Miss Noir City or are we not allowed to talk about that on the air? Twice. My past. Yeah, I'm a two time. Look at her. She's like, I don't talk about my past, but I was a two time, you know, person. (laughs) Thanks, Jackie. (laughs) She can't ever. I mean, you you should see it. She has a sash that she wears sometimes. It's just like two times. Miss Noir. No, I've seen her. I've seen her at the Safeway in on on Church Street in the Castro, just walking around with that sash shopping. Yeah, I got the sash on. I got curlers in. I'm smoking a cigarette. It's terrible. It's like you you don't know who I am. Don't you know who I think I am? Bag my groceries, bitch. Cling on Vanna White. (laughs) She stopped wearing the sash when it got stuck in a revolving door. (laughs) Sounds like her. We've all been there. I know. Haven't we? Mm. That's why I don't want her cape anymore. That's right. Maybe the two of you should talk capes. (laughs) Because Chalky's quite a cape connoisseur. I'm a cape guy. I'm a big cape guy, yeah. So, so what makes you a cape guy? Do you just have multiple capes, or do you just wear capes all the time, or do you love capes? Uh, I, well, when I'm on stage, I wear my uh, Native Planets uh, uniform, which involves a sequin cape. I know your listeners can't see, but can I show you real quick on cam? Oh, sure. do it, do it. All right, then yes. you guys can describe it to you for listeners. Maybe I, may, I'm going to take a screenshot of it. He's going to show us on the cam. On the cam. We're He's going to pull now. it out on the cam. I can't make it bigger. Why can't I make this bigger? Son of a bitch. That's like a personal <laughs> problem, dear. It does sound. I know. Mm-hmm. Okay, hold still because I'm going to take a quick screenshot. All right, well, here, oh, let me put it on. Look at that thing. The majesty. Wow. wow. Here, let me try to get good lighting here for you. And then Joseph's go. got nothing on you. Damn. Ha! Oh, wait. Oh, let's see the back. Okay. All these sequins is making the camera kind of freak out. Yeah, yeah. hold still for a second. I love it. The camera's like, what the fuck's too too cool? Ah. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, okay, step up closer to the... Okay, hold still. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Okay, hold, hold still. still. Okay, it needs a second to, like... Recalibrate. It is, like, so confused by it. Okay. It is. It's like, what it. the fuck are you doing? But it has a hood, see? Oh, it's so good. Did you have that made special for you? Yeah, a special. So hey, here's a funny story. Last time I played in Reno, uh, there was this man with face tattoos, and his girlfriend really, really wanted my cape, right? So he came up to me after the show, and he said, hey, I'll buy that cape off you for an eight ball of Coke. (laughs) Wow. I I said, first of all, it's not for sale. Second of all, it's not even like a fourth of what that fucking cape costs. What are you talking about, dude? He got very upset with me. And he was trying to steal it for all night. So I'm very paranoid about my cape. Oh, yeah, you should be. I mean, I know half of half the people on my phone will try to steal that cape. Right. So what do you think about my cape? Since you're a cape expert and be honest and it's fine. I won't be offended. That cape is the most amazing fucking thing I have ever fucking seen in my goddamn life. Thank you. I don't want it to be too Burning Man. You know, I'm trying to avoid Oh, it's not Burning Man. No. It's too (laughs) fabulous. Yeah. She is oh. so jelly right now. 
Don't defile your, your Shecky, cape. I'll get you one, buddy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you guys had matching capes. I will fly Shecky, around do you backup the room. dance? What was that? Do you he do does. That? Backup dance? I do. <laughs> All right. Do. I'm getting you a cape. You're backup dancing for me. That's what's happening. Woo! Backup dance. I, I back up shimmy. <laughs> I back up. It up. I, 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 I drive the backup. I, 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 I drive the getaway van. I do it all. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. So what? What planet are you from? Is it Melmac? No, that's my homie. That's my homie. Gordon's from there. But um, Gordon's living in the uh, the West Bay right now from Melmac. But I, I I'm from a Chaka Twelve. It's called. Chaka 12, Chaka 12. So uh, what's it like there? It's always hot. It's never cold. Uh, we read Hamlet a lot. And, uh, <laughs> there you go. We, we only eat Reuben sandwiches. The queen is Chaka yeah, Khan. Is, is Hamlet the one that's all like to be or not to be? Yeah, which is a good question. Think about it. It's a really good question. Is that the one where they're all like, oh, Yorick, I knew him well? <laughs> yeah, Yorick was a cool dude. <laughs> you had a party. Klingon's been brushing up on her her uh, Earth lit. <laughs> like I mean, you're Klingon. Do you speak Klingon? It, which is kind of like it sounds like Hebrew. It does. Oddly, <laughs> it really does. There's probably some racist reasons why it sounds like Hebrew too. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Roddenberry was like, yeah. Hmm. These Klingons are strangely dark. <laughs> What you and trying to say, Klingon? I, don't, I think that Klingons are misrepresented people of color. <laughs> I would agree. I mean, because think about are. it: in the original show, they were all Puerto Rican. So yeah, <laughs> that's right. You no, know, yeah. that's that's one that's one thing that um, I've learned since going to Star Trek conventions is that like um, Star Trek is really inclusive, right? Like there's there's costumes for every culture, basically, which could be seen as good or bad. But when I go to these things. I'm not a big Star Trek guy, but I like to go to conventions, and uh, I see that people really feel included. Don't you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. I've never been to a Star Trek convention straight up. I really, I highly recommend it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really fun stuff. Well, we've I, certainly done a lot of Comic Cons, though. We have. Yeah. But I have gone. I went with a friend of mine, and we went. I went to uh, one that was. Uh, that was pretty fun, but he's gone to a couple. Like he's gone to the ones in Vegas and like the, the and met all these people and stuff, and and they're all pretty cool, you know. Most of them are, because a lot <laughs> of them. Well, a, a lot of the because the thing is, you, you got to talk to the guest stars, you know, and the people who are who who make like like one or two appearances, because they're the yeah. ones that are like really like, hey, I love, I love it, thank you, and, and they're really like you know cool, and they're happy that you that you actually like them. But if you talk to like the actual stars. Well, that's not true. Brent Spiner was kind of funny. Um, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> he's kind of a dick too. But uh, Brent Spiner stole a pin off my uh, jacket one time. What? See, what, what, was the pin? what was the pin? Who's who plays the queen in the Forbidden Zone? Oh, Susan Tyrell. I had a pin of Susan Tyrell, and he stole it. He's like, I love Susan Tyrell, and he took it right off my coat. But here's another. Uh, <laughs> that's like, so bizarre. I, I, get, I get I get paid. One of my side hustles is I get paid to film conventions, right? So I was filming a Star Trek convention, oh. and um, I was filming uh, Jonathan Franks, who plays Riker, yeah, and, and Michael Dorn. He's nice. Jonathan Franks and Michael Dorn. My, Jonathan Franks is nice, but he's a drunk, so he was wasted. Yeah. And I was filming a Q and A with him, and I was I was wearing a, a hat, and he uh, he called me out in front of all of the Trekkies. He said, "This motherfucker right here looks like uh, Chuck Mangione." He said, <laughs> <laughs> "Wow." Yeah, and I'm like, "Hello." <laughs> it was very embarrassing. Everyone laughed at me. He called you Chuck Mangione. And then they laughed at me. They laughed. All the Chuck's laughed. <laughs> and, you're, and they're you're, all old, so they got the reference, you know? And your carry yeah. powers kicked in. You killed everybody. No, no, no. I was. No. I, I kept it on. I kept it good. He just laid out some smooth jazz is what he did. That's what he did. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. You know how that song goes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's chase this back to music. So, like, I'm, I'm real curious. What... What influenced you to just become like a one man's outer space show? I uh, I've always like like earlier when I said um like radios in my DNA. I have to always do radio, or else I kind of feel like inadequate, or, or there's a hole in my life. 
same things for bands, right? Like if I'm not in a band, I kind of feel like I'm a shit person on this earth that doesn't deserve to, to exist. So I wasn't in a band for a long time and I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to do my own thing. So I did my own thing and it's been, it's been really good. It's been really uh, fulfilling for me. That's wonderful. And for our, our listeners in Fresno who uh, haven't heard of you, um, <laughs> you play keyboard, but it's so much more. I play bass keyboard and um, I sing through a vocoder. So it sounds really robotic and alien. And oh, here's an, you know, I was sick of uh, playing punk and metal straight up. Like, I'm just sick of it. Like, it's, it's, I wanted to, I'm from outer space, uh, Los Angeles outer space. And uh, Far out. <laughs> my, my, my culture, the Mexican culture loves like the lowrider culture. If you guys know what I'm talking about, loves that old, <laughs> that old school funk. <laughs> The old school funk shit is what I grew up with. So I wanted to play. Yeah. That's what's in my soul. You know, I wanted to play that. And like, I can't really play that with my Hesher friends. Aww. And so, so I did it. I did it on my own. And it's, it's good. That's wonderful. But how did you, how, how do you get to be two of the greatest cultures on earth? How do you get to be Mexican and Jewish at the same time? Well, there's actually a lot of us in Los Angeles. And I'll tell you why. Um, all of the, who runs Hollywood? Uh, Jews, um, right? Aliens, lizard people? No, Jews. And who's lizard from? Hey! Who's from Los Angeles? He's Mexican. Not lying. Right? So all all the Hollywood Jews marry beautiful Mexican women from Los Angeles, and then so there's and then I I appear. <laughs> oh, God. That is so beautiful. But there's and it's funny. Like, there's a lot of Mexican Jews in L.A. It, yeah. For some reason up north there's not a lot, but in L.A. there are there we're plentiful. Totally plentiful. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it explains um, Herb Albert, perhaps. Exactly. You nailed it. Yeah. That and would be the, you and Herb Albert, my, my two favorite Mexican Jewish musicians. Who do you guys think is smoother, Chuck Mangione or Herb Albert? Herb Albert. Oh, Herb, I don't yeah. know what they are. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Are these great oh, warriors oh. on your planet? Cling on, cling on. You got to type in Herb Albert in the team. On my planet, crap. yeah, we have we have these like great statues of uh, this smooth. We have Kenny G. Uh, <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> it's a disease some people get. Yeah, I know it, it itches. Get it, your feet. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> it's a, you can't make it go away once it starts. There is like a powder for that though. Don't worry. A cream. Use the cream. cream. Okay. Uh, so what shows do you have coming up? Oh, good question. I'm uh, March 9th uh, will be at the Golden Bowl. And uh, March 31st, I'm playing in Los Angeles with this great band, Nilbog, who's mm -hmm. got Goblin backwards. What? And they do all horror. <laughs> they do horror covers uh, like uh, Morricone and, uh, you know, John Carpenter. And they Ooh. do, they, they get the original synthesizers that were, Oh, or big, like the weird moogs. Yeah, the big, big moogs and arps and and uh, modular synths and, and they do it live and it's really good. So it's a couple shows coming up. Oh, Dildo oh. Factory, March 31st. Everyone come to the Dildo Factory. Oh, are you a stress tester at the Dildo Factory? I'm not. I'm just going to perform there. Thanks for asking. And by perform, what do you mean? <laughs> Play music. Are you, are you going to oh. be working on your Is flexibility? Is the Dildo Factory a real Dildo Factory? I don't even know what you're talking about. It has about. to be. <laughs> there has to no, be. there's this place in Oakland. It's a venue. It's called the Dildo Factory. I think it's an actual Dildo Factory, actually. Yeah. It says Berkeley. I'm looking it up right now. Berkeley. That's in Berkeley. And yeah, yeah. yeah there's no address. So, uh, ask a punk, you guys. <laughs> okay. I think I work with a few of those. Dildo Factory. And uh -huh. maybe, it, maybe it was. I'll put you guys on the guest list at the Dildo Factory. Yay! Road trip, guys. <laughs> I'm a I'm a lifelong. I can't member. tell if it was a dildo factory. I put dildo factory. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Why? <laughs> you you ask way too much of Google. Uh, yeah, I know. Basis. Google's like, what do you want from me? I added five exclamation points and four question marks. <laughs> it, it knows I must know. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, guess I, nope. We gotta go. We gotta go see Chalky at that and pick up a few dildos on the way. Yeah, come smell my cape in person, everybody. Oh yeah. my god! Oh, that's so hot. I'm sure that cape smell is like cape. so good. <laughs> Smells like glamour. Okay, well let's take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna eat some snacks together. 
Because life is more mysterious in a cape. Capeteria. Because it goes so well with a top hat. Capeteria. Because you can hide stuff under there. Capeteria. Bring a little magic to your life. Capeteria. Capeteria is a subdivision of Thrifty Chalice LLC, solely owned and operated by Crystal Balzac. Please use the back entrance off of Shendell Avenue, and not the main entrance on Shanks Road. Look for the bat's windshine. No outdoor loitering. If are caught loitering and asked by authorities if you're looking for Capeteria, the answer is no. Oh, they're so red. Yeah, they're oh, so red. Oh, so are we supposed to be starting this now? I didn't know that we were... And we're are back. We back. Are we back from the commercial break? And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. It's okay, the back of the bag says nacho cheese gets lit. <laughs> hey, this is so hip, you guys. It's lit oh, AF. Like farts. Did you say lit AF? Don't ever say that it's again. lit AF. <laughs> I'm hip. I'm like the millennials. Okay, so I'm a little worried about putting this in my mouth because this, what is this the color of? Blood? The color of um, death. I got the flaming hot Cheetos. I uh, you got the wrong ones. I know. It doesn't matter. But it's the same Again, thing. you can flame and hot Woo. anything. Okay, it's a bit of a delayed reaction. Yeah, like you can put it in your mouth right away and it doesn't yeah. burn you. <laughs> it doesn't hurt you. Yeah. That's what my but uncle then, told me. But you then as mouth, you're chewing on, it, you. chewing on it, it gets warmer and hotter. Yeah, it's like you have about three seconds until the absolute searing pain begins. Why did you pick these? Well, they're brand new. They're a brand new product, and um, where I live in West Oakland, flaming hot things are very popular. So, uh, and I love yeah. Doritos. I love Doritos. I'm a big fan of Doritos, um, and I love to try all the flavors of Doritos. My favorite flavor is the Canadian pickle Doritos, which is what? very Told rare you, and very pickles, incredible. Pickles are great. I, I'll get you guys a bag of that so you can talk about it on the show sometime. Oh, that's but, good. Um, so I was very excited to try the flaming hot Doritos, and. Uh, yeah, I hated these. Oh, you didn't like them? Well, I ate. A, I housed a whole bag in about seven minutes, and <laughs> I went to bed. They're very, very, very neon bright orange. Yeah. Um, there, there's a little kick to them. They're not super flaming hot, but I woke up at five a.m. vomiting bright <gasps> orange. What? Yeah, they made me super sick. I was sick for a whole day after I ate a bag of these. Bullshit! I was vomiting, 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 vomiting. Wait, vomiting. so these made you vomit and you had us eat, I'm eating them right now? <laughs> I Love ate it. them after I picked them. Love uh, it. But I, I, I hope you guys survive this. I'm sorry if you don't. So, I might uh, just you, stop with the two chips. <laughs> what do you guys Love it. about? Are you just fucking with us or did you really vomit? I'm not fucking with No, I'm super serious. When he says he ate a whole bag of chips, believe him. He's super he serial people. Chips. Yeah, no, I, but it's funny. <laughs> like I was sober. I ate the chips. I went to bed and I felt great. And at five in the morning, like a, something a start a started a bubbling, if you know what I'm saying. Up, 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 and coming that bubbling crude. Thing, it's that thing where you're like, you're like, I, I think I feel sick. I don't know. Let me walk to the bathroom. And then as soon as your body sees the toilet, it's just like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, just like chortle. Like, yeah, let's do this. Like, <laughs> it looked like a, it looked like um, uh, a Halloween or like a, what are those Halloween stores that, that show up around Halloween? <laughs> it looked like yeah. one of those inside my toilet. Uh, so did you? So you threw up? Yeah, all orange. day, all day after eating one bag of flaming hot Cheetos or Doritos. Do you think it so, was the Doritos? Yeah, I don't know. I think it was the Doritos. But like, so I will say to your listening audience that like, um, stick with the nacho cheese, spicy yeah. nacho maybe. But I want to hear what you guys think of these chips. They're pretty hot. And They're I can't hot. Yeah. Stop yeah. eating them. But I you know what? I, I had a very them. similar experience with a um. With the uh, um, very hot taco at one point, that um, was like, you know, it was a, a novelty taco that a place was, was selling <laughs> for the month. Wait, you ate a novelty taco? Yeah, like they, they were like these, they were like these tacos that you ate as a dare. <laughs> oh. And I was ate it, and I was just like, you know, it's pretty good. You know, I get this is food. I could eat this, and then. This like literally three hours later, it was both ends. 
just like violently uh, suddenly. What was it like a ghost pepper thing? I don't know. I mean, I just think it was just my body, you know, now can't take spices the way it used to. Yeah, we have to face it, we've been aging. Yeah, but also it was a novelty (laughs) taco, so it was was really just meant to look at, I think. (laughs) But so is a choco taco. I'd definitely rather eat one of those. That's my full name. Taco taco. That's your middle name. That's the name of your vagina. (laughs) Oh, oh, whoa. whoa. (laughs) Is this that kind of podcast? (laughs) <laughs> Chaco Taco. Uh, yes. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Honey. I thought you knew, buddy. <laughs> we put the adult warning on iTunes, so we can say whatever we want. Oh, nice. Um, so when you said you ate a whole bag, was it the three eighths ounce bag? Yeah, it's the smaller bag. Yeah. Uh, okay. oh, at seven, when you're at Seven Eleven, the one that's right in front of you when you're paying for stuff. That's exactly where I bought mine. Yeah, I know. You know. You know where I live, right? The Outer Sunset. I live by that Outer Sunset. I mean, Fresno, but the Outer yeah, Sunset, so 7-Eleven. <laughs> You're so far away from everything. Jesus the God. Outer Fresno. <laughs> the Outer Fresno Sunset. You got a, uh, you got, you got a couple Sevs in the Outer Sunset? Sevs, of course. Well, yeah, especially this one. This one's like the uh, like the capital of, of deadbeats, too. It's like we got a collection of like just random homeless crazy people. And that's where they all go, is that parking lot. If you're homeless, why would you live in the outer sunset Fresno where it's so cold? You know what I mean? I know. It's freezing. But I think there's a public toilet at the beach. Oh, if you're yeah. homeless, you could live anywhere. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you just so want to say. go to L.A. or something, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm real curious. Shecky, do you have these? Did you get the Flaming Hot Nacho things? Uh, I did. Um and- did you, did you actually eat one? Oh, no, I just licked it. <laughs> I'm the fool. I made myself stop eating him after um, Chucky's, like, description of what happened to him because I can't. Uh, I don't have time for that today. Mama doesn't have, Mom has to clean house. <laughs> Look, I think, I think you guys will be fine. You you guys have strong constitutions. I'm, I'm eating this earth food, which is not for my body. You know what I mean? That's true. What do you usually eat? Cadbury eggs. I told you, Reuben sandwiches. That's right. That's right. If you Reuben can't dip it, you're not going to eat it. No, we should make Reuben tacos. We should make a mix of um, Jewish and Mexican food. Reuben tacos. What would that be? That would be super groovy. Yeah, that, that'd be okay. I'd be okay with that. Sounds but yummy. But maybe like the taco is actually, actually a latke. You just like wrap it up in a latke. So it's like a, I would say it's a corn tortilla with cheese on it, then a latke on top of it, and then a piece of fried chicken. Holy shit. Fried chicken? Yeah, I think that would be good. You sold me when you had fried chicken, girl. <sighs> Sounds gross. So I did read that Doritos comes in like buffalo wing flavor as well. Have you tried that one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. It's in, a blue, it's in a blue bag, by the way, so it's confusing, and it's good. It's delicious. Um, uh, by the way, suggestions for your, yeah. for, your next, for forthcoming snacks. M and M's have three new flavors. Oh, English toffee, Thai coconut, and another one which I forget. And I recommend those. You guys, they're they're all day vapes, banger, banger, bangers. Uh, try the, <laughs> try the uh, the new M and M flavors, yeah, y'all. The English toffee. Sorry, sorry I didn't suggest those. Banger, banger, banger. What? Sorry, it's millennial speak. You wouldn't understand. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. I don't <laughs> hey, it's lit but... AF. Stop it. <laughs> These M&Ms are on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get some Thai M&Ms. That sounds so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything comes in 1,000 flavors at the moment. It's a little confusing. Yeah, Oreos kind of fucked everything up for everything, right? Yeah, right? Peanut butter Oreos and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I There's so much that. so many snacks to choose from. It's a embarrassment of riches, really. <laughs> it's an embar- embarrassment of um riches and food like products. It's true. I am always a little embarrassed to buy what we buy to review on this show. <laughs> Why? I love it. <laughs> I love going into places and buying embarrassing things, though. Don't you? Isn't it kind of a thrill? Yeah. I do. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So now that I 
I've stopped eating these things. I feel that my skin is flushing. I like have like a full on rosacea attack. No, I see you on camera. Yeah, you're you. Uh, you should go to an emergency room. <laughs> Your body's ambulance. like, what? Oh, no, what have you done to me? <laughs> Why? Now I gotta find someone to give these to because I've got like an, an entire bag. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go visit the homeless guys in front of Seven Eleven. There you go. They'll take it. No, that, you know, make sure you do it far away from your house. You don't want to have homeless guys with the shits anywhere oh, within God. walking distance to your house. She's you not guys kidding. know that Bob Marley song about that 7-Eleven food? No. no. What? Buffalo roller. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Yeah. Why did, do you ever have that meat they have in the case there on the rollers? Like The rotisserie dogs? No. The rotisserie dogs? The, like pizza taco flavored hot dogs and stuff. I haven't in years, but I used to I used to love that shit when I was poor. <laughs> the little taquitos. Yeah. Little, I mean it's I like I've eaten those. That's have you guys good. had seven eleven pizza? Apparently they have pizza now, right? Yep. I have not had that. I know I what just, it tastes like. It's I've gotta be had it. nachos. They're like classic, the nachos. The cheese just sort of comes out <laughs> <laughs> in like some kind of Molten lava. The chili out of the machine. Oh, man. So good. There's an image. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Here's your blood. bowl of machine extruded chili. <laughs> and it makes a noise when you push the button. It goes, eh. Right. That's yeah. how I'd make the noise, too. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess our final take on these Doritos is that they're red and they'll make you sick. They'll make you poop. <laughs> Everyone try them. Yeah. <laughs> and that Chucky will let you get it in to like, like halfway through the bag before he tells you that it made him violently ill. Because <laughs> 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 misery loves company. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> we can compare notes later. <laughs> also, like, I'm not even lying. Like a bunch of my hair went gray after I ate them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> like I was vomiting all day and then I looked in the mirror and like a, my, my beard and hair was gray I'm like oh my god these things took me through the ringer <laughs> wow um, that's a ringing endorsement good job Frito-Lay keep it going yeah totally <laughs> keep poisoning America one bag at a time ooh Frito-Lay's in Texas kind of like Fresno a lot like Fresno Plano, Texas. It's probably exactly like Fresno. <sighs> well, we're going to take a, a short commercial break and like um, do a colonic or something. And then we're going to come back and talk about this amazing movie we all saw called Velvet Buzzsaw. All right. Commercial break. Too ironic to commit to anything with actual meaning in your life? Our straight ahead yoga class is too authentic of an experience for you? then join us at Jackass Yoga. All of our classes make yoga about something else. You've tried goat yoga, <laughs> but what about raccoon yoga? While you hold downward dog, they'll scratch your fucking eyes out. Or how about Jewish yoga? Hilarious and stereotypical. Who doesn't love electro swing yoga? Swing high Sign up now and get a free spot in our monthly competitive yoga match. Because winning is what yoga is all about at Jackass Yoga. All right, we are back from commercial break. I hope you enjoyed that commercial as much as we love getting paid for it. All right. Here's some more Speak Easily Hour Minute podcast. We all watched a movie on Netflix, and you can too. It's called Velvet Buzzsaw. Zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> Apparently, it's some kind of sexual term. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's about the vagina. <laughs> I mean, I'm really? not sure if that is true, but I mean, it sounds like it would be. <laughs> Shecky says all-knowingly. It's, it's exactly about the vagina. <laughs> Um, 
So, Chalky, did you watch this? Yeah, of course I did. What, I'm not going to watch this? Come on. You guys told me to. I did. I was like, <laughs> you must watch this. Um, God, what can we say about this movie? Um, it is like... I have a lot to say about this movie. Okay. I okay. do, too. You're the <laughs> guest. Please start. Kick, I us, actually, kick, us, start. kick this we'll, shit turn off. Should we run through <laughs> the plot real quick? Yes. Give us a summary. Me? All right. Well, okay. it, kind of start, it kind of starts as like a scathing commentary <laughs> on the art world, right? Like J- Jake Gyllenhaal is this uh, art critic, right? He's in Miami. Is it during Art Basel or something like that? Yeah. And, and he's, he's looking at stuff and he's, 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 he's critiquing it and he's being so flamboyant. I think he's supposed to be bi or gay. And he's overacting his ass off. I hate Jake Gyllenhaal. I think he's a cool actor. I hate Donnie Darko. I hate Nightcrawler. And this is the same director as Nightcrawler, by the way. It is, yeah. Nightcrawler, to me, people love Nightcrawler, so I know I'm in the minority. Nightcrawler was a super vanity project that was just made. But Jake paid for that movie himself, by the way. Like, really? Out of pocket. And it seemed like he just wanted to win an Oscar so bad. And he's just acting his like overacting his ass off. I also hate Maggie Gyllenhaal, by the way. I think she sucks oh. at acting. Uh, they're bad actors. This family sucks. Anyway, I think <laughs> and it wants to be a slasher film. So this lady finds a, a bunch of art. This man dies in her building and uh, she walks in and she sees all his artwork, uh, which is like this concept is great. Oh, okay. my God. Yeah. It, it, yeah. They could have they, they like, like had such a great movie there. Right, so it's about it's about these art world people, uh, you know. And we, if you live in the Bay Area, you know all the fucking douchebags that work at SF MoMA and shit. There, it, it, like, yeah. there's a, there's a lot to unpack here that you could do a lot with. So she finds this outsider artist who died in her building, and she sees all his artwork, and it's just like so inspiring, so magical. And uh, she steals his artwork and puts it on display, it's essentially exploiting his dead body, right? Yeah, it's and, like a Henry Darger kind of situation. Thank you. That's the name I was like, Henry Darger. Yeah. And uh, uh, he, he put he put a lot of himself in his art, meaning his blood. <laughs> like Literal. that. <laughs> so the paintings start being haunted, and the people that start exploiting this man or hold on to his paintings start dying in a slasher Friday the 13th style way. So it wants to be a lot of things. It wants to be a commentary on the art world, and it wants to be a slasher film. Um, I'll let you guys talk about it before I give my, I mean, you can tell what my opinion is, but yeah, I mean, I have to say like (laughs) when you guys were telling me that it was dreadful and it was horrible and I'm like, Oh my God, this movie's (laughs) two fucking hours. Should I just pretend like I watched it? And then like, yeah, sure. Juxtapose. Um, but I may, I made myself watch it this morning and, and I actually liked it. I, I really actually liked it. So, you know, all the, three of you, I know you guys hated it, but I just, as a person that went to art school and like hung out with those kind of people, I just, I was just like, yeah, they're finally showing these people as they're like, you know, the little up their ass shitheads that they are. And then just the whole concept of just the art world being completely controlled basically by male artists. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, yeah. and then the, so it's like this commodification of beauty, it's or whatever, or people deciding what's valuable. And then the whole thing about the rich people, that's the part that really I was just like, yeah, these rich assholes are basically looking for investments mm-hmm. and something to increase in value. And, you know, and then they're like loaning it out to museums so they can get a tax write off. It's just like, you know, like, why why are we allowing these rich people to determine what culture is? Yeah. It yeah. had a lot of good things to say along those lines. Like, no, I, like, 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 the concept, like, on paper and at the pitch meeting for this movie, it's yeah. fucking great. Yeah. But in execution is where it fails. And a lot of it is the acting. And, and, and for me, like, um, why do we love slasher movies, right? We love the, the interesting kills. And... Uh, uh. And this movie tries so hard to have interesting kills, but it falls flat. Like, so there's this supernatural aspect to this movie, right? Like these paintings are haunted and they're going to kill you, but they never explain why. And every painting kills you in a different way. And it's like, well, why, yeah. is, that, why is that happening? Like, it just, you can't. Yeah, I it, feel like the CGI a, was bad. It's a slasher movie made by a dude that's never watched slasher movies. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, I think there's there's CGI and special effects. That's the I I didn't mind the acting. I thought it was, you know, as because I really looked at it as, as an over the top kind of campy farce. And so then it should have done it like 10 percent more then. You know, it was like uh, almost, yeah. almost camp. There's some great acting in it. And, and uh, mm-hmm. Malkovich is always great. Rene Russo. Oh, yeah, he's hilarious. Great. And you know who's great? David Diggs from Berkeley is gr- he's amazing. I love him. It's just Jake that ruins everything. <laughs> Aw, yeah. good moments too. I don't know. I think it's hard to talk about this movie without thinking about movies that that it stole from and that did it better, like Bucket of Blood, the Corman film. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest ever, right? Exactly. And Paint Me Blood Red, mm. H.G. Lewis, right? Yeah. And, and like that's all I kept thinking of the entire time was like, those are camp movies that got it right. And like we know why the cause and effect of everything happening in those movies. And it's very unclear as to what exactly the spirit of this outsider artist, why, why he's taking revenge is it seems to be uh, based on, uh, on, on financial gain, right? So yeah. he's punishing those who are gaining financially and then he can only punish through art so even art yeah. that's not his own, like those monkeys that come out of the painting and <laughs> and strangle that one guy. Oh, yeah, so, that was confusing. They don't... Okay, well, I, I just want to make clear that, like, I'm saying Jake's acting bad in this movie. I'm not explaining why. His his tone, like, he, he's sometimes he's super flamboyant, and sometimes yeah. he's not. Sometimes he's super gay. And so it's just not balanced, right? He's just... He's all over the place in, in, with his character. Um, but, yeah, so back to the kills. Like, he, he's haunting different paintings, and... At one point, he haunts a tattoo. Yeah, it's yeah. art. Yeah, is yeah. it? Is it, it art? <laughs> that, that being said, um, it doesn't help that everyone in this movie is a fucking asshole, so you don't care if they die. Yeah, you don't care about yeah. anyone. You know what I mean? Well, you know the thing that the thing that when I was watching it, it was just like the, all the little conversations they were having with each other. It was really super like clickish. It's something like something that only a certain like. I knew it was probably not accessible for people that didn't know people like that, mm-hmm. you That's know, or whatever, yeah. you know, like How does they're, they're to middle America. Yeah. Like they're talking about art and like, you know, and these like super lofty ideals and, and, you know, basically they're chasing money and they're pumping up, um, you know, certain artists, of course, male, because, you know, did you know that just having a man's name on a painting or, or a piece of art makes it 40% more valuable. Yeah, and there's that great, you know, that old Gorilla Girls poster that said um, less than 5% of the artists in modern art museums are are, are women. And, mm-hmm. and 85% of, of the females are nudes in modern art museums, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, you know, like, who's choosing the art? Yeah. Right. So, so the I museums... Am. Yeah. Check you. Shecky, um, all the boobs. How do I say this? You have a thing for the hole and the pole. You, you, you've the been boobs. known to go both ways. All the boobs. Um, how do you how do you feel about Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, portrayal of bisexual? Well, bisexual I'm not bisexual, guy. so I'm. Uh, I am. I am. I, 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 I am Shecky sexual. So. Okay. What is that? Um, it's sex sexual. Any pole, any hole. Um. So, uh, no, I just, I, I watched the movie and then I watched, uh, cause like I watched these movies and then like, cause like, I don't like, I don't like horror movies that much anymore. And I just thought it was very silly, uh, because it was about, it was supposed to be like a, 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 lamb, a, a lambasting of the, of the, uh, or lampooning of the, um, of the art world. And, and we all create art. And I thought it was it'd be very interesting to see how this one director and 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 whatnot like put their stamp on 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 this. So I, that's why I thought it'd be kind of interesting to have a conversation because because all art is subjective, and and I just kept thinking to myself, you know, where's this old lady on a on a uh, on a uh, on a quickie, you know, with a Gandalf staff like yelling at Jake Gyllenhaal saying, "This is not art." I don't, you know, but something that actually happened to us. Right. And so, so I'm looking <laughs> at it, I'm looking at it and, and I get it. You know, I, I thought the metaphors are very hard. Yes. It's, it's, you know, the guy was an outside artist. He was, you know, abused by his dad. 
you know, he 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 bled into his literally bled into his his his, his paintings, and uh, he had he he had wanted all of his paintings to be destroyed on upon his death, and then the woman was like, nope, you know, I, I can use this as a way to 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 get further or, or get better cred. Yeah, so like so, yeah, an ambition. So and that's why he was punishing all all the people. So like all the people that died were people who 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 had um who who weren't in art for the sake of art, quote unquote. So it was like okay, you know. But again, I, I have to agree with Chalky with with the deaths seem to be very uninspired, except for the orb. I thought the orb was pretty cool. I know, <laughs> like uh, well, I laughed my you mean, ass off when they you mean cut the when, end of the sphere. Yeah, the, the sphere. sphere. When All it, right, when so it, they in the, in the, in the, they gave it early on in the movie. There's this piece of artwork that's a sphere, and you stick your arm in it, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, this is so crazy." <laughs> yeah, you're later, to I, don't mean to on, I don't mean to shit on your how you're saying this inspiring, but so the artist put buzz saws inside the sphere. Well, I don't know. That was the thing. It was just like, and that, or did they the, magically appear? Like, yeah, magically appear. But, but, but that was the thing. I was just kind of like, okay, so so this buzz saws like, you know, that the art is killing it, because killing them because it's it's magical now, and I'm like. Okay, we're dealing with a possession, you know. It's I, a I haunted know, just... orb. I'll go with it. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of like that... a phantasm reference, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... The thing that made me laugh about that sphere too was right before she got killed. Like she's like walking through, and then there's this whole thing of like his process, and it's like evolution yeah. of a yeah. sphere. And I'm just like, it's still fucking round. Well, that and was she laughed thing. at like, it. Every, everybody was so it. pretentious in that in that movie, and so like, like you said, like they were. I just think overall, what the message they were saying was was interesting and, and fun, but the execution is is where it is where it, it lost it it lost it, you know. And I just wish yeah. that that I don't know. It's like it's like it's like either either they needed to be more campy or they needed to be more serious. It was just like what what, what they delivered was just kind of like man. And and, and 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 Odessa's yeah. comment about it being. You know, oh, it had a night gallery vibe, but I was like, exactly. Like, I really wish that it should have been. It should have been an episode of like, you know, Jordan Peele's new Twilight Zone. You know, yes. only only like twenty two minutes. You get in, you do your thing, and then you're out. I thought the movie was too long. It was unnecessary. I thought it was hilarious when the security guard thought that the the murder scene was an exhibit, and so just started letting <laughs> right? people in. I was like, that was brilliant. I, I was have like, to say, okay. that was brilliant. It was There's so good, silly. Good moments like that, indeed. Yeah. No, you 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 guys are really good at talking about movies. <laughs> you nailed. <laughs> it, it was like it was it was just too normy in middle of the road when it could have been so much more. Yeah. yeah. Dan then, Gilroy uh, wrote checks he couldn't cash. Exactly. And then and then to talk Creative. about Jake Gyllenhaal's performance is just like I got the pretentious snobbiness great. So so I was like okay like he's he's he, he's this pretentious snob, and and there's it's funny because like. So like I watch stuff on YouTube all the time, and there's this picture of like you know, um, the, the, someone was doing like because the big thing now is for people to to go online and do like explanations of like movies and monsters and like and so some people make fun of it, some people do it for for gags, and they had this picture of Jake Gyllenhaal like yelling like nah! <laughs> this really like face that I'm just looking at it is and the bull haircut with the bangs and everything just like everything about his character just like. You just want to hate, so so in that aspect, he was like, "Good job, you made me hate the shit out of your out of your character," you know, and and even more, you know, because I just don't like you. So, <clears throat> so yeah, I haven't really seen a movie of his that I have actually liked. That's a funny thing. Like Chucky was onto something. Like I never really, like, I've never seen anything that I like. Like I watched him in, and I'm th- I've been thinking like, "Wow, like Jake Gyllenhaal really killed it." Like I've never seen a movie in which. Like I looked at him and I was like, "Wow, this guy's really cool." Or, or, or this, this, he's a really like that's interesting, you know. I just like I have no thoughts of him, and then like I enjoy like the Marvel movies. So he's he's like in the new Spider Man movie. So part of me is like, "Okay, well, let's see how I like Jake Gyllenhaal." In this no, I feel movie. like he's really lucky to be a successful actor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, you are one hundred percent right. Like, you ever look at an actor? I actually and you really say, loved him in this. I don't know. It's just totally funny. There's something about him. There's <laughs> something about him. Like you look at him and you're like, wow, that guy's really lucky to be an actor. You know? I think his sister's very good. I, I really like really secretary. Um, I liked him and, and Donnie Darko. Um, I haven't seen Nightcrawler, but I, I'd like to, cause I think it's sort of based on like on the story of Ouija, the photographer, isn't it? I have no but idea. It's like a, 
I mean, it's hard to see it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll watch that on my own time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you do um, that. <laughs> well, I like how we have very different uh, yeah. in this movie. This is good. That's true. Well, it's just, I mean, again, you, you, you make these movies, you make these art, you know, for people to, you know, to, to have their thoughts about it. That's all, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like the, the whole thing that I thought was really interesting about it is like it was a metaphor about how people feel that art is dangerous and that they try to control, you know, ideas and stuff, you know, dangerous ideas. And it was very, very interesting. Like, the, you know, there was just so many there was a lot of stuff that they were throwing at the wall in it. Um, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool how that one guy wouldn't hire the 21 year old at first, mm-hmm. you know, he was, you know, it was just like, wow, this is the only job where being a 40 year old woman is an actual requirement. Well, I think that guy <laughs> needed someone to tell him what was art and what wasn't. Yeah. He, he really yeah. knew nothing. That's the, oh, that was yeah. the thing. It's like these people are making like, and I, and I agree with what, <clears throat> what Vanna was saying. It's like these, these people are kind of like the gatekeepers of art and yet they're yeah. all assholes and know nothing. And then, and then yeah. you saw with the, what is it? The, the black guy, you know, the black guy started to sell out and then he got hurt. And then Damn he was rich. like, yeah, he got damaged. And he was like, Nope. And he went back to it. And it was like, and he was just like, and then John Malkovich making the art in the sand for himself. And then the water washing it away. Like, so, that so was a no, nice ending. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, but, but yeah, again, that, but I thought it was just so heavy handed. It was just like, okay, he's, he's doing art for himself in the, in the, in the in the in the sand and the water's washing away. No one's gonna see it again. Ooh, and I was just like, okay, I get it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little, little heavy handed. So I have to say that uh, that that black guy, as you said, that's David Diggs. Yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. Blind spotting. Yeah. He has a band called Clipping, which is the greatest band in the world. You guys got to check out Clipping. Oh, hold on, I'm yeah. writing a note about so you, it. You know this guy? Yeah, he's 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 great. What's his story? Um, he's an experimental rapper from Berkeley, and then he he's, he was in Hamilton. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that's how I recognized him. Yeah, but uh, he he left Hamilton to go back to his experimental rap roots, and, uh, and then he made that movie Blind Spotting. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, which is fantastic. Wow, I'm, very cool. I'm just glad he's getting work. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad Malkovich is getting paid. Get paid, Malkovich. Get money, boy. Oh yeah, yeah Tony Netflix Collette, is, amazing actress. Oh yeah, I love them. <clears throat> like he was in sure. that. He was in Bird Box. I wish he was in better movies, but hey, you know, get money. Get money. <laughs> get money, Malky. Is he having problem with money? No, we just want him to get paid more. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad that Tony, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Tony Collette, you know, was in the movie. Yeah, she's yeah. the best, isn't she? Yeah, she looks like great. Hereditary? What's that? Did you guys like Hereditary? I haven't oh. seen it. I'm kind of scared to watch it. I can't see scary movies. I know what it's about. I love scary movies. I, I, I recommend it. eating uh, flaming hot Doritos while you're doing <laughs> <it. laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> I don't Very know good. if I can take It'll your really It'll really sell the experience of, of, yeah. of, of, of the horror and the, gir- the gut turning. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, one last thing I have to say about this movie is um, about the writing, about the names of these characters. <laughs> Oh, I, like please. Jake Gyllenhaal's character's name is Morph Vanderwalt. What? Morph. Yeah, Morph. Vanderwalt. Renee Russo, her character is Redora Hayes. Fuck. That one like hip, hipster art art gallery dude is John Dondon. John Don. John Don Don. Yeah, John Don Don. Don Don. Yeah. Don Don. Don Don. But I, the funny um, thing about it is like I would love to. That's that's my thing. They have these really weird like crazy names and i would have loved for someone just to say like you know you're talking about ted <laughs> and jake gyllenhaal's like no you bitch and he like runs away <laughs> my name's you know? oh oh no, the artist the haunted artist name is d's and d's. like and it's just there's so many d's nuts jokes in this right movie. i know you, d's but, nuts yeah. no d's nuts over here <laughs> yes i made up a uh, um so if i ever become a painter I made up a, a man's name to sign my paintings so that I, because there's no, really no reason for me to sell it as a as a lady person. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, like this is just like a funny. So I decided that the name would be um, Fred Pope. Fred it's like Pope. super oaky. <laughs> hmm. Fred Pope. I'd worship, yeah. dude. Yeah. This doesn't it, like. What do you think that does that make you think? Of? What does Fred do? Fred has a truck. 
Yeah, he's a plumber, maybe? He has yeah. truck nuts on that truck. Massive. <laughs> no, I don't know if he has a truck nuts, but he definitely probably has a mud flap girl. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, if I yeah. ever do art, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it under a a a, a woman's name. <laughs> what is her name gonna be? I don't know. Maggie Vagden. <laughs> <laughs> wow, not bad. That is so good. <laughs> just, I don't know. I just think Maggie, because like you, because like you look at Maggie and you're just like her name is Maggie Vagden. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Vag. Ah. Well, actually, Klingon, you are a painter, and maybe you should put up some of your paintings in the uh, Speakeasley Hour Minute uh, uh, group on Facebook. Yeah, I, I want to see the Vagden collection. Feed uh, in them and haunt them. But I was, yeah. and I think, and I think, like the because the Speakeasley crew, blood. the Speakeasley crew has been immortalized in paint, you know, by by, by a pretty good artist. And I'm always wondering. That's right. Like, I was wondering, like, 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 you, guys. you know, what's going to happen when you're like, what's going to happen after your dad, like, you know, passes away? Like, he's going to haunt those paintings. It's like, thanks. Oh. Thanks for that image, man. <laughs> I have painted with my menstrual blood in the 90s. <laughs> no! Did you well, really? It was the 90s. It was, so was the 90s. It was the 90s. I know. It was a uh, pissed people off, too. I did it with, with <laughs> semen and cocaine. It was just beautiful. You can lick the paintings and get high. It was before I ever did coke. <laughs> I like that. That's your that's your time uh, marker. Like before yeah, that, yeah. before Coke, after Coke, totally. BC, 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 <laughs> BC, AC, ACE, post, post after Coke. Coke era, post Coke, pre Coke. <laughs> wow, um, cool. I think I think we are very confused about this movie. <laughs> And I love it. Well, I think that you guys did. I mean, you guys didn't like it. I, I didn't. I was actually maybe knowing what you guys had said had, had tempered my expectations enough. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, like, I mean, like, it definitely, you know, I was actually doing other stuff kind of while watching it. But, um, but, it, but, it, like, you know, some of those times when they were talking to each other, it was just like, oh, my God, these people are so up their own asses. Yeah, it touched the nerve with you because I think I think it's because you. It sounds like you kind of lived that a little bit when dealing. With I went art to people. art school. It's exactly for, like, like I didn't go years. to art school, so I didn't have that experience. So you're like, like this really touched a button for you because you're just like, oh my god, like I actually had to hang out with these people for extended periods of time. Fuck them all, you know. Or you people know? that wanted to be those people, and it's just like, well, yeah. you know, like art school shouldn't be, you know, like they really need to take take note of the. Um, the issue, the misogyny issue, and the racism issue that's in the, in the art world, you know, yeah. they they can't, or or they should charge women less to go to school. <laughs> there you go. Or how about men just stop making art in general? Or they they have to paint with their own blood. There you go. <laughs> I think everyone should just stop making art. Maybe I have to paint with their blood. There you go. Goes right back to uh, paint me blood red. Um, Which again means it's cool. all been done before. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, excuse me. Did you just sneeze? On the- <laughs> God, oh God. I warned you beforehand. I have allergies. I thought it was like a flaming <laughs> hot Don't Cheeto up your nose. <laughs> So, Chalky, Chalky, one more time. Tell everyone where they can find you. So I'm at chalky.bandcamp.com, and you can listen to me every Wednesday at 4 to 6 or at your leisure at bff.fm on the Chalky Horror Radio Show. Awesome. Oh, and do you actually go there to record the show? Yeah, every week. That's so cool. That's ever at the secret, secret, the secret, secret, secret alley. Place. I call it the secret, secret alley. alley feel, yeah. <laughs> hey, so, so people out there, if you ever want to meet Chalky, you know, in just go over no, there and stalk him. No, please don't, don't go. I don't want to meet anybody. <laughs> You're like, no, don't do that. Yeah, no. don't do that. I, I'm full up on meeting people. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I have all the friends I can possibly handle. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If if uh, you liked this show, tell us. Go to <laughs> iTunes. Give it five stars. And then you can say whatever the fuck you want. Yes, but please but make up reviews. Stars. Make up reviews. Yeah. We would love reading like really weird reviews. So just no people don't know like if you review stuff on iTunes, it really helps it get up in the in the algorithm and people find the show easier. So please review the show. Yeah, yeah. even if it's yeah. bad. If you review the show, 
this time, if you review the show between this episode and the next episode, <laughs> like that means anything. Uh, if you review the show, we will give you a shout out on the air. <laughs> yes. We, we will, will make fun of you on the air. Yes. Or, yeah. Something or not. Like that. No, no, I think we should. That'd be amazing. Like, and even if you're like anonymous at anonymous.com, we will talk to you and we'll know it's you. Yeah. Fuck you, anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're also on the Facebook Speakeasy show. We also have the Speakeasy Hour Minute podcast group where we talk about secret things that only the secret club people can know about. So you can join the club if you want. <laughs> it's a special people's club. If you want. <laughs> want. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chalky. Thank you, Chalky. Thank you, and everyone. Uh, watch day. out for your tattoos. Make sure you don't get killed by them, okay? Oh, thank yeah. God I'm Jewish. Don't have any. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but <laughs> I can see Chalky right now, and he's got quite a few. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the hounds what? of hell. Oh, that's beautiful. The one with the cat. Oh, my yes. dog's barking. At the cat. They know it's time to end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've certainly been an audience. Good night. Bye. Bye, Chucky. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.